I work at one of the last stores left in a nearly abandoned mall. I closed on my own last night, and I hope I never have to do so again. By Jam Franz We aren't the only store left in the mall. There's about six shops in total, but they're all spread out along the different spokes of this wagon-wheeled-shaped mall. We're the only one in this section. Oftentimes, the other stores close early. Considering the lack of foot traffic, I don't blame them. We can go an entire night without seeing a single customer at times, so I know it's only a matter of time before our store shuts down for good, too. I had never closed before, but my co-worker Britt had told me that after dark, with most storefronts bared and unlit, not another person in sight, it almost felt like you were all alone in the world. I was relieved that she was going to be there with me tonight. Her peppiness was contagious, and at least I wouldn't be by myself, staring into the dark expanse where the old Macy's used to be. The only thing is, Brits never came in. She no call, no showed, which she had never done before. I was so worried that I called our manager, Chris, but his exact response was, no one wants to work these days. You can close alone. It's fine. He stopped by to drop off the extra gate key, muttering about work ethic the entire time. I bit my tongue at that. I know, Brit, and that money is tight. She worked her ass off, and she'd never just miss work without a good reason. And even then, I was confident she would have at least let us know. So... That's how I ended up where I am now. Knees pulled to my chest, phone on silent, screen brightness turned down, waiting for the sun to come up. Not alone. I wish I were. I'm banking on whatever is out there to be adverse to sunlight, since it's so pale, almost translucent. So, how did I end up here, you ask? We hadn't had a customer in two hours, and the mall had descended into a level of darkness that surprised me. No wonder we got very little business after dark. From the road, I bet the whole mall looks like it's abandoned. I wished we'd had some sort of music playing, but the sound system, like most things in this place, is broken. I occupied myself by dusting and prepping everything for the next morning. It was both a good way to prepare for the approaching end of my shift and to distract myself while making a bit of noise in the process. Something, anything, to cut through the thick silence. Eventually, I stepped out of the store and closed the gate so I could take a quick bathroom break. I had written up a Be Right Back sign to stick up, but I doubted it would be seen by any eyes other than my own. The green exit sign flickered at me before it too surrendered to the darkness. The only sound I could hear were the buzzing of the struggling sign and my own footsteps echoing through the massive, empty space. I jumped as, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a pale figure behind the glass of one of the closed stores. I turned sharply, but it looked to be an old mannequin illuminated by the scant neon light coming from the distant and empty food court. No thanks, I thought to myself as I sped walked towards my destination. Why do mall bathrooms always have to be at the end of such long hallways? I suddenly wished I had brought my phone with me just to have the light, something so I wouldn't be walking into pitch blackness at the end of the hallway. The inside of the bathroom was nice and bright at least, but as soon as I had entered the stall, a hoarse whisper from the other side of the door nearly made me jump. Please, I'm scared. What? I whispered back, nervously. Silence. When I went to wash my hands, I noticed all the stalls were open. It was so quiet. I never heard anyone enter or leave. I thought I had heard a choked sob from behind me, but chalked it up to my overactive imagination. The one downside of the bathroom being so well illuminated was that it made the hallway feel even more eerie once I entered back into the darkness. 
as I was nearly at the end of the hallway, finally approaching the dim light. I jumped as I heard a door open and close behind me. I laughed nervously as I reminded myself that the mall wasn't actually abandoned, not yet at least, so a customer emerging from the restroom was not a supernatural event. What was concerning though, was how they filled the hallway with the pungent stench, like something had died and spent days baking in the summer heat. That's when I remembered that the men's room was down a different hallway. There hadn't been anyone else in the woman's room with me. I tried not to gag or to betray my fear by looking over my shoulder. It sounded like they were struggling to breathe as they pursued me, their slow, measured breaths wheezy and rattling. I quickened my pace. As I passed by, I instinctively glanced back at the storefront with the mannequin that had scared the ever-living crap out of me earlier. The store was empty. Nope, I thought, as I sprinted back to my store. That now familiar wheezing, with a sort of dragging shuffle added in, echoed through the dark space behind me. I struggled with the gate because my hands were shaking, but I finally got it open, just enough for me to slide underneath. I felt infinitely better after I had locked the gate behind me. I was drumming my fingers on the counter, nervously, when I noticed that they were dirty. A flaky maroon covered my fingers and palms, patterned as if it had come from the gate. Sure enough, when I checked, that was the source. Splattered in some areas, smeared in others. Although it didn't look fresh, I could still detect a faint, telltale copper scent. I tried to convince myself that it wasn't blood, and even if it were, there was a perfectly logical explanation. I went to the back to look for paper towels. I was not going back to the bathroom. I'd been back there for a bit and had, for the most part, regained my composure. Told myself I'd imagined what I'd encountered in the hallway when I heard what sounded like someone shaking the gate. I sighed. It seemed like we did have a customer, after all. There was no one there by the time I'd dodged boxes and supplies and made it back to the front. If they called and complained to Chris, I knew I'd never hear the end of it. I did feel guilty too. I always strive to provide great customer service. I was just so unnerved that I was off my game. Hey, I'm sorry, we're open. I called out too softly in the darkness beyond the gate. Silence was the response, although I thought I heard that faint rattling wheeze again. I craned my neck, angled my body so I could see further down the corridor. I could make out the tall, pale figure of the mannequin in the distance inside. I assumed that someone from one of the other stores, who likely had far too much time on their hands, was pranking me. But the longer I stared at it, illuminated by distant purple neon light from the food court, I realised that its arms and legs were too long. Its torso was too short to resemble any mannequin I had ever seen. Pale arms ended in long fingered hands, dark, stained. The exit sign it was standing under chose that moment to feebly attempt to flick it back to life. Flash, flash, flash. With each flicker of the weak green light, I got a better, brief look at its face while it seemed to be focused on something off to the side. I could make out slits for a nose and a long, wide mouth smeared with something. No eyes, just smooth pallid flesh where they should have been. I jumped back and let out a gasp, and in my haste, I accidentally rattled the gate, loudly. Its head instantly jerked in my direction. Shit. With each flicker, it was just a bit closer. I ran back and did my best to jump and clear the counter, but instead hung my foot and loudly crashed into the display behind it. My khakis were torn and I'd left a small trail of blood. I just know Chris is never going to let me hear the end of it for knocking the display over and bleeding on the merchandise. I can't see it, but I know that the thing is still standing there, 
because every so often I hear its wheezing, low guttural coming from directly outside the gate, or the sound of long, thin fingers scraping down the metal bars. Maybe Brit didn't know call no show after all. Maybe she never left the mall after she locked up last night. I know I'm not going home tonight. I'm waiting here until the sun comes up. Oh, and I'm never closing again. I just want to thank Jam Franz for allowing me to narrate this story. If you liked what you heard here, head over to their Reddit page and show them some love. I'll leave a link for the original story in the description below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, stay tuned for one more nightmare.